Hello my darlings, this is Maria and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, please subscribe down below for more content like this. Today we're going to be talking about the heart and the mind connection. I'm going to give you a quick diagnostic that will enable you to learn if you are led by the heart or the mind, mostly in your day-to-day -day activities. I'm also going to give you a quick practice on how you can balance the two polarities. I find that most people exist fair and square in one or the other, and that means we're living on the edge, you guys, but not in a good way. There is a wealth of possibility that opens up when we open up to 100% of our resource. There is a reason why inside of us we have both the masculine and the feminine energies. It is not so that one of those energies could be domineering and dominating and the other is going to have to settle for being a subordinate. It is because we are meant to find our own sense of equilibrium, our own sense of togetherness, our own sense of sovereignty. Because we, in our microcosm, are meant to be solving this very macrocosmic issues around masculinity, femininity, finding the balance and eventually finding the unity. So today we're going to be taking a quick stab at the heart and mind connection, this proverbial blissful state. But before we get into the diagnostic, let me give you just quick, broad brush strokes of people who are led by the mind and people who are led by the heart. Although arguably this is kind of very intuitive, right? There's nothing I think that I'm going to be telling you that is not an innate knowing inside of you. So the masculine polarity, or what is dubbed as the mind here, is our active state. This is that spark that happens before the happening. This is that desire. This is the inspiration for something. This is that direction. This is the energy of um, electricity, actually. So if you think about it, that's why the mind, our brain, our, um, and our neurons they're connected by electric impulses, right? That's how neurons communicate with one another. They're sending each other an electric impulses because the divine masculine is the cosmic force of electricity. It is very quick. It is very pointed. So people who are led by the mind, not only are they logical, not only do they usually factor in and like they like planning, they like things to uh, be measured. They like things to be precise. They take emotion out of decision-making, right? So they're truly very logical. They are, these are also the people who would find it a lot easier to do certain things for the greater good or to do certain things that, you know, to sacrifice a few for the benefit of the many, right? That is a very logical, logical conclusion, right? Not to say that people who are led by the mind are somehow Machiavellian in their nature, not at all, right? We're talking about divine masculinity here. And as such, it is a gift, right? So people who are left by, uh, led by the mind are masterful creators, right? This is the realm of Logos. Logos is the creative aspect of God, right? So your communication dwells there, your language dwells there. So our minds are important, masterful tools that enable us to create our own reality, right? So manifestation is actually part mind, part heart. It would be quite impossible for us to just create with our hearts. We need our minds to be that impulse to be the spurring, to cause things to become, to get them into an active state. We require our minds. We require the sweeping force, the speed of electricity in our body. So that's the mind. The heart is a magnetic principle. That is the divine feminine principle. That is our emotional space. That is the empathy. That is the warm fuzzies. But not only that, the heart is our inner compass. The heart is our intuition. The heart is responsible for making sure we stay true to who we are. Not because it would be like some bigger purpose, right? But al although the heart actually, it it's quite interesting because it first starts with a microcosm of you, right? It starts with self-love, but it also, your heart always starts with understanding your inner compass and understanding your North Star. What is it about me that makes me want to pursue that thing? right? So it's deep. It's a sense of deep introspection. It is a sense of being comfortable, being alone, actually being with yourself because the heart never truly feels along, alone. The heart is incredibly interconnected with the entirety of existence. It is actually to our heart space that the world around us reacts to, that nature reacts to. Do you know how um, 
you know, with animals, right, you can really tell, like some cats and some dogs really react to some people better than others. And it is that instant, instant reaction. Like some dogs just bark at people and then you'd have certain people that the animals just really, really love. The animals don't just react to your energetic blueprint. They don't just react to your auric field. They react to your heart emanation. There is a crystal in the heart that both animals and um, in your chest area, which is a heart space, uh, that both the animals and elemental beings react to. That is how they measure your worth. That is also how they measure whether you are a danger to them or a friend, your friend or a foe, right? And so our heart spaces are incredible treasure chests of alignment, of flow. And so it starts with who we are in and of ourselves, but then the heart goes above and beyond because in loving itself, it learned to love everything else around it as well. And so being heart-led is actually being on the purpose, being mission-driven, but it's also factoring in others and not just being self-serving. I guess in some ways, the mind doesn't care too much about, or it doesn't really feel that selfishness, or there's something inherently wrong with selfishness or ego. And it is in that heart space that we discover that is there is life beyond our own little universe, right? That there are other people that need to be factored in and that by factoring in another into your own decision-making, you're able to find those pockets of opportunity, those pockets of consensus, those pockets of bliss that are, you know, um, ever present. It's just one needs to want to find them. And so, like I said, um, going back, taking, taking a step back, we are usually one or the other. Uh, very often I find with human beings, it's very hard to find a 50-50. Even at soul level, it's really, really hard to find a 50-50 masculine feminine. The, I guess the only being that is fully 50-50 would be source consciousness. But beyond that, there are splits, right? And, you know, we don't all have the masculine and feminine energies developed to the same degree. And yet, and yet, if we are talking about true feeling of bliss, true feeling of peace, true feeling of contentment, it starts with bringing your heart and mind together into one equilibrium. So here is the practice. I want to close your. I want you to close your eyes. You can. I hope you're not driving. If you're if you're driving, don't do that. But um, I want you to close your eyes and imagine, like really quickly, just imagine that there's like a waterfall of light falling all over you, right? So we're just going to get in the state, and this waterfall of light is getting you into the present moment. It is cutting you off from your surroundings, so you can focus for a quick moment on this diagnostic with me. I want you to imagine that in front of you, there's a set of scales. On the one side of the scale is your heart, and on the other side of the scale, there is your mind. I want you to see, to take a look what you're seeing. What side of the scale is heavier? That's the diagnostic. Is it the side with your heart in it that's heavier? Is it the side with your mind in it that's heavier? Which one is heavier? So the heavier side of the scale is a dead giveaway for how you've been running your life. Is it your heart that's running your life? Your passion? You know, your mission? Your love? Your acceptance? Your compassion? Or has it been your mind? You know, the inspiration? The action? the language, the precision, the logic, right? Which part has been running your world? Now, there's no right or wrong answer, right? This diagnostic is purely just as a point in time to let you know so you can check in with yourself and be like, well, this is actually where I am today. And now, wherever, this is this is the part where you start the adjustment. Remember how I told you we're going to do the adjustment thing? Uh, and I'm, I'm going to tell you how to actually bring things into equilibrium. Imagine that you are a force of nature, which you are. You don't have to imagine that that is the truth, right? Imagine that you are aligning the two sides of the scale to be in perfect equilibrium with one another so that neither one of them is superior or inferior anymore. And I want you to stay here for a quick second and feel into it. Feel how your energy shifts. Do you see that you have been leading with one side of you? Whereas you've been, you, you had the opportunity to lead with both. Leading with both doesn't mean you inherently give up your strongest aspect. 
It doesn't mean betraying yourself. It doesn't mean having to settle for anything. When you have an amazing strength in one area, whether that is your heart or your mind, celebrate it. But understand that you're leaving and leading with only half of your resource. And there is so much more that's still available to you. So when you bring these two aspects of you into perfect equilibrium, where neither one of them is better than the other, you start approaching this God consciousness, this state of divinity, while being fully in the physical body. And this is such a beautiful thing because you realize there's more of you than you ever gave yourself credit for. Whether that is your masculine side that's been lacking or your feminine side that's been lacking, it doesn't really matter. When they work in tandem, that is the true sacred marriage. That is the true divinity incarnate. So, but this is not, this. we're not done yet, don't worry. Now I want you to imagine a figure eight coursing through this set of scales. One loop of the figure eight is going to go around your heart and one loop of the figure eight is going to go around your mind on that, that, that are both still placed on those scales. And so it, with your eyes closed, I want you to keep drawing, keep painting that figure eight movement the infinity movement. Why did I choose the infinity movement? I love figure eight for any type of long lasting bonds or connections. It's actually a sacred geometric shape. It is truly a never ending stream of energy that once you set it, you can then forget it because it's going to keep working, right? It's really, it goes into perpetuity. And um, there are quite it, this shape is quite unique in terms of this property, right? It does not require any other outside movement or outside stimulation to keep going. And so I want you to focus on that middle point of the figure eight, right? Where the two loops connect. And I want you to focus with it with your third eye. So imagine like, like you're, you know, with your eyes closed, you would imagine that your third eye is projected into that middle spot. And so it's almost like you are as a being now standing in the middle of that figure eight. And then I want you to feel how the energy is still coursing through the two loops of the eight. And you're right there in the middle, in the state of perfect unity, in the state of perfect equilibrium, right in the middle of that axis. Where you get to not be one polarity or the other polarity. Where you get to be both polarities all at the same time. And how exciting is it? How filling is that? So allow yourself to stay in this space in this place of zero understanding that now you can benefit from a hundred percent of your feminine polarity and a hundred percent of your masculine polarity you don't have to give up one for the other whenever you're ready you may you know open your eyes feel free to come back here i find that whatever our overactive state is whether that is the heart or the mind it is really hard to do the going alone. It's kind of like, you know, you guys don't like loneliness, right? Like you don't like being alone. You don't like feeling lonely. And yet you've allowed one aspect of you to carry the burden of this incredibly complex third dimensional living. How limiting is that, right? And is it a time for us to play with 100% of our resources instead of just saying, you know what? I know this is my strength and that's what I'm going to lead with. But what about this other strength? And my message to you is that there is no lack of anything in the universe. Every lack is, 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 is an illusion. Every perception of anything lacking is an illusion. There is an infinite amount of divine masculinity and femininity to go about. And you have the vessel in your body. Your body is the vessel that can encapsulate both of these. Both of these energies all at the same time. Remember how we did the figure eight with the scales? I want you to imagine that you're placing that figure eight with a scale straight in your chest area. And that area, and, and you know, and that figure eight just keeps on going, connecting your mind and your heart and activating both of these centers. This is true spiritual alchemy. 
This is one plus one equals 10 billion. And that is the power of bringing your inner femininity with your inner masculinity into perfect alignment and perfect balance. Because like I said before, if one of your sides has to bury the grunt of all the work, it's going to get resentful. It's going to get tired. It's going to get, I mean, it's going to be out of breath. Like there is, it's, 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 it's a dead end essentially, right? It's really, really hard to do the work of two people. If you're just one person in perpetuity, same thing here, you get to lean on both sides of you. Imagine and feel into the liberation that it holds. You have been overcompensating for the lack of one of your aspects. We don't even need to get into the why this happened. We can just work with the blueprint that you have. And now that you've brought them more into perfect harmony, right? You've aligned the sides of the scale. Now you're going to be able to achieve your goals faster. Your, your mood is going to improve. Your overall energy levels are going to rise. You're going to see that you're able to make more impact on the world around you. It's going to be easier for you to build meaningful connections and relationships with other people. It's going to start to feel, you're going to start feeling more at home actually in this time space reality. I will tell you this though, because we have pathways, neurological pathways and other pathways how, of how energy also moves in our body, not just how the physicality of us moves inside of our body. Everything is a pathway. Everything is a template. Everything is a blueprint. What I'm saying is your body is used to acting a certain way. Your energy is used to acting a certain way. Because of that, your default setting is going to go back into itself, right? Meaning whatever disbalance, whatever disharmony you saw, you're going to get back to it eventually, right? Life happens, you get back to your default mode. So I recommend that if you're feeling down or if you feel like something is disbalanced again, just go back to this quick alignment practice, literally takes 30 seconds for you to imagine the set of scales, see where, which side of, of you is heavier, like which side of you is, 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 is doing the work. And then gently lifting that side of the scale so that the scales can become balanced and draw the figure eight. And again, that will help you get back into the fullness of your own resource, into full connection, full congruence, full unity consciousness within. Alrighty, my guys, please let me know in the comments uh, what you think about this if you attempt to do the practice and you know if you have any questions. Alrighty, sending you a big, big, fat, huge virtual hug. I'll see you in the next one.